Jenny, what are you doing? Hi, Tony Stewart. Oh, well, I'm just getting ready for my concert. And you know what? We have some very similar causes with kids and animals. Well, want to give me a sneak peek at the concert? I'd love to. Are you going to cry? I might. Okay. This is called Butterfly. I saw a butterfly out in my window. Oh, and I think we both know beauty only lasts so long. I see the rain fall outside my window But I ain't worried cause I know A brand new day can't be wrong Whether you're a race fan or not, you know Tony Stewart And Tony Stewart is the NASCAR legend and the founder of the Tony Stewart Foundation And we're joined today by some very special guests celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Tony Stewart Foundation. We have Eric Eraser, the foundation director, and Pam Boas, Tony's mother, and of course singer-songwriter Jenny DeVoe, who's pretty tight with the Stewart family. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for having us. Thanks for, Thanks for having being us. being here. Appreciate the, the opportunity. So let's start with mom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What inspired you to start the foundation? I worked for Tony for 20 some years, but the second or third year that I had been there with him, he would be calling, he'd be on the road somewhere and would call me and say, Mom, you've got to help this animal. They just said on TV, it needs surgery and they need money to take care of it and, and get it taken care of. So, after three or four times of that, I said, we need to do this the right way. Let's just start a foundation and then we can make sure we have all the money we need and appropriate it in a proper way. We take care of the animals that have to be rescued. Uh, we donate to organizations that, uh, like yourself, okay. Grateful Rescue, Thank you. who take in animals and uh, try to rehome them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of that. And then the kids, we do organizations that uh, support children who have handicaps and, and uh, illnesses. And, need it. and then, of course, the race drivers. Yes. Race drivers usually have insurance of some kind. But there are times when it just doesn't cover everything. Sure. So we try to help out on the other end. Ed, I want to talk about these dogs. Tell me about these dogs. Erica can tell you better about the dogs. She's <laughs> the one that real. had them created. Yeah, they are not <laughs> real. They are beautiful. They <laughs> so everyone knows um, of Max and Mia, um, Tony's um, um, German Shepherds. Yeah, German Shepherds. I was losing my thought there. So this uh, is after so this Tony's is, German Shepherd. Yeah, this one's after Max. Um, and then um, the other dog is Findy after Leah, uh, Tony's new wife. Uh -huh. uh, her dog, um, they are, um, you know, they travel with them. They're at the house. Um, and so everyone knows them and then associates them with the foundation. Um, so we thought it would be a great idea to um, kind of commemorate that. Um, so these are actually for sale uh, on the website. Um, all the proceeds go back to um, the foundation um, oh, to benefit us. Very yeah. cool. So Erica, tell us and everybody about the, the Tony Stewart Foundation's involvement with the Children's Museum. So this is one of the most exciting projects that I've done since I've been here. Um, and I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. Um, <laughs> my husband and I uh, took the kids over fall break to the Children's Museum and um, it's the best children's oh, museum yes. it is. ever. It is. I mean, it really is. Number one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, we've been there many times. Um, and so I just stopped in and I was trying, we were out at the uh, sports area and I said, I feel like we should partner with something, right. do something. Um, and so I just, you know, sent an email uh, when I got back and um, it 
kind of steamrolled um, and now we are sponsoring both the oval track and the drag uh, straight track there um, That's awesome and we've made it uh, wheelchair accessible very cool um, it's accessible by any age any height as long as you have close toed shoes nice. they say uh, everyone is available nice. and able to race. The wheelchair part's a really big deal now. It's like you don't really think about that, but my best friend is now in a wheelchair, and so, and she is Tony's number one fan, so. And there ain't no time for crying, ain't no time for blues. It's what I keep telling you, ain't no time for crying. You have been pretty tight with the Stewart family. Phil we hit it off. I would say, yeah. like the uh, we met in I think 2011, and my husband does, you know, video projects, and he's done that forever. And we were doing a video for the animal for the Greyhound Rescue, mm -hmm. horse rescue, because I don't think people know that he'll Tony will rescue retired or injured thoroughbred racehorses so oh. that they don't go to market and mm -hmm. so that they can get um, just you know live the life that they deserve which is just being out in the pasture and being a horse mm -hmm. so um, yeah we had a great time one really long day where we did some really cool videos and I I taught Tony how to play guitar really well take it slow so G Thank you ladies so much for joining us. What an honor to have you here. Congratulations on your 20 years. Thank you. And here's to many, many more. And thank you for having me back and hanging out with you guys. Since I taught you a little bit about guitar, why don't you teach me how to drive because it looks really easy. Sit, stay, watch. After the break on Great Four Rescue TV painting a portrait of your pet. Grab a few friends and learn a new skill. We'll show you how it's done. Andrew, will you read me a story? Oh yeah, let's watch Faith's Book Nook. Grateful Rescue presents Faith's Book Nook. Watch dozens of storytelling videos right now at gratefulrescue.org. When we arrived on the scene, I would run towards the fire, barking at the men to hurry up with their hoses of water. I can watch her as a bedtime story. Or anytime I want to learn about animals. Thank you for joining us tonight for tonight's book reading, and thank you for supporting Grateful Rescue. I'll lend you my daddy. I'm sure you'll agree. Now that he's home, he belongs just to me. Celebrities and pet lovers of all ages read their favorite books about animals. This is First Dog, Henry Holcomb, and we have a story for you. Apparently it smells good. Story time is anytime at Facebook Nook. Watch Book Nook anytime on your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. Faith's Book Nook, right now at gratefulrescue.org. I'm Pamela Terhune, joined by my co-host, Patty Spittler, and dear Stewie. Stewie. Oh, good to be with you again. Oh, thank you. Lots to do today, so we'll start off with uh, an informative yet kind of sad note. Um, you brought in 17 puppies and lost several to Parvo. What happened? We did. Uh, we brought in 17 puppies, two different litters, and within days, Parvo struck and, and took four, yeah. four precious lives. Um, it, and you gave them shots too, I mean right away. They did, they had their, they had their, their uh, Parvo vaccines are in series, that you get about three different series of them a few weeks apart. They had had their first, but, um, so they had to have come infected yeah. before. Before. Um, it's it's just amazing, Patty, how fast oh, it, it strikes. We had we had Banyan on with you oh, recently, no. and yeah. and within days he was gone. Well, so that's the sad news. Uh, but we do have some good news too. Seventeen puppies, so you've got thirteen that are in puppy training. Thirteen survived, and we have puppy training. They need to be trained. They're going to be big and unruly if they're not. <laughs> so uh, so we are doing that. We um, we started with them this over the weekend. <gasps> oh, and that's our cue for... Adam's got the story. Let's take a look. 
When Pamela needs help, volunteers come in mass to assist with anything Grateful Rescue and Sanctuary may need a hand with. Today we find that the puppies are in need of some important training. Today we started with some basic training and we're trying to get the dogs to respond to their names. This is Cricket. Say hi Cricket. She responded to her name and got a treat when she looks and responds to me. She did sit down. Bonnie Krupa from Advanced Canine Techniques brought her talents to the rescue to help these pups get ready for adoption. Well, Pam asked me to come out just because they have so many puppies rather than trying to transport the puppies to a class that I offer in town. It was easier for me to come here and her to get puppy handlers to teach these puppies. They're four months old, so if we can get them a little training, it's much easier to get them adopted out. Tonight was the first night of our puppy class, so one we wanted to work on, um, we call it the name game, saying their name, getting them to give us eye contact, um, working on teaching them to sit, um, having them to lay down a little bit, working on some touching. That way for those that are doing the potty bells, you know, hopefully they'll they can use their nose or their paws to master the potty bells. Um, and we just did a little bit of leash pressure with leash walking too. I wanted them just to learn when the leash is moving to stay with their handler a little bit and with their owner. Um, so that's what we did for the first night. Um, and every week we'll work, work on two or three different commands and hopefully um, they'll have a good, we can fade the treats out and they'll have a good master of all of the basics by the time the class is done. Oh gosh, Bonnie is wonderful. I took her class when I did training with the other puppy that I got from Grateful. And she is wonderful with the training that is positive reinforcement with treats. And she understands that sometimes you just have have to be patient and that the puppies need a break or to get a drink of water and that they respond sometimes to really um, good incentives. She calls them the stinky treats. Well, I think that's just going to help the adopter. Um, puppies can be a handful, so if they have a little bit of training, then um, I think they'll do better for the, the adopter and more, more likely that the owner will keep the puppy and not go back into the shelter like, like some dogs do at this time when they have behavioral problems. Folks like Sherry, Katie, Peggy, and the rest of the volunteers are here to make sure that these pups are handled properly during the training, but also get the attention they deserve. Why do I do it? It's a really, really good cause. Uh, Pam's been working on this for a few years and she needs volunteers and I'm thrilled to do it. I'm thrilled to be part of it. So, and I love animals. I think anybody that comes here, they love animals. So. It's very gratifying. And five pups in this group deserve a little extra care and attention. These Antolian Pyrenees pups went through a tragic case of parvo, which took the life of almost half of their litter and left them fighting for their lives. Well, these puppies, the one I have is Canyon, and he had parvo, so he has survived that. And um, it's just, it can almost make you cry. They were so special. Now alongside the pit puppies, they will train for six weeks to become well-mannered companions with Bonnie's guidance. But Bonnie gives credit where credit is due to Pamela. Can't even imagine. Um, I mean, Pam's amazing. I mean, she is. I mean, just with her heart and soul, I mean, just to take care of this many puppies and getting up at 2 a.m. for potty breaks and stuff and to go through that parvo scare. I mean, any rescuer, shelter, puppy owner, I mean, it's just even a breeder that can go through that too. That's scary. So um, just I mean, her her vision and her goal for, for dogs too, and in her goal for um, the um, Grateful Rescue Sanctuary, just to be able to provide all of the resources for pet owners, all of the different um, services that she wants to do, all of the different um, things that maybe aren't already here in Muncie too, I think is just a really great benefit. And just that she'll take puppies in and find them homes and just, you know, she's got a great following because she does so many wonderful things. So, and really does a great job networking. So um, she's, yeah, she's, she's fabulous. Let's move to cats. Oh, cats, yes, cats. Uh, some of them, if they're neighborhood community cats, sometimes they want to be outside. You know I love cats, so I love everything. Yeah. Uh, I have one from Indy Humane, right now named Timber, and there was a feral outside, yes. and I started feeding him. You've domesticated a feral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and finally I got him to come inside. I uh, oh. also got him all neutered and vetted and all of that, and he loves Stewie and my other cat, too. Oh. Oh, wonderful. So I call him former Feral Freddy. Former 
former Freddy. Feral Freddy. Freddy. Here he is. <laughs> he is so cute. Well, when I first saw him, he'd come and he'd run away, run away, run away. But I started feeding him outside. This is a, it started about November. Yeah. And then pretty soon I got him to come in. I leave the door open and feed him inside. <laughs> and he's in now a lot. But he still likes to go out sometimes yep. during the day. But what you did, and also Rob Day, hi Rob, came over and we trapped him. That was in December, I That think. was in December. And what did you do? What did you do to him to make right. it good? So there are many clinics, um, and you can even find them in your local area, that provide low-cost spay neuter for outdoor cats or okay. community cats. Right. And so Freddie got fixed. He got all of his vaccinations for what's called distemper, um, he got a rabies vaccination, a good flea treatment. Yes, he had fleas, I know. And yeah. because he's outside, right. he got his little left ear tip so okay. that everybody knows he's already been fixed. Good. Regardless of whether he comes in or out, right. or but if he's outdoors, everybody knows he's been cared yeah. for. When, in the morning when I let uh, Stewie out, even though it's a fenced in yard, he runs between his legs and he can go <laughs> right through that fence. So he it's a little tiger, you know? Yeah. And then he comes back, you yep. know, depending an hour, maybe 10 hours, but he comes back at night because <laughs> he knows where the food is and in his good bed. So I told you this before, Freddie only loves me. <laughs> <laughs> that's he, right. And that's fine because when he goes outside, I don't want him going up to other yeah. people. So that's good. And that's called um, bonding to a, a human, right? <laughs> Cats are very much bonded to one human, even cats yeah. inside a house. You'll find that they have that one person yeah, yeah. that they just love. And he also gets along with, that was important, he gets along with Stewie and he gets along with Timber, my Indie Humane Rescue and Cat. And that's amazing because sometimes those transitions are really tough. Yep. You do amazing work with cats that uh, you put them in a clouder, get them spayed, neutered, and you can feed them outside. That, yep. That's one way to help the neighborhood cats, correct? Absolutely. I mean, cats were designed to be outside for okay. the hundreds of thousands of years. And wow. so when they're born outside, they can live very good lives as long as they have somebody looking after them, giving them shelter, food and care, yep. and getting them fixed. Now, <laughs> I have something for you over oh. here, and I want you to give it to to Rob. Okay. And it is it is our book. The dog who said, well, oh here, goodness. you put it in there to give yeah. Rob. It's my book. So that, and you know a portion of the proceeds goes to rescues and shelters. Thank you, Patty, for everything that you've always done for the animals. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
and she was born to a feral cat. And she showed up at my house when it was like 10 below zero and she was all of two pounds coming through the yard and I ran out and snatched her up and she's been in the house ever since. While everyone was painting, the pups got to visit with the guests. But these pups here are the ones that came down with canine parvovirus, which can be highly contagious and deadly. These are Anatolian Pyrenees shepherds and they came as a litter of nine and they also came with another litter of puppies that were pit lab mixes and that's a litter of eight. So we brought home 17 puppies all in one trip. They were being nursed back to health here at Grateful Rescue and all of a sudden uh, in the midst of vaccines and the normal routine care. They all got parvo and they lost four and they were all in the Indianapolis vet and they got a very large bill to, for all the vet care of the, take care of them. Now there are five <laughs> that are looking for homes that we've managed to heal with the vaccines. When these puppies got sick, we had to separate the puppies and they are all doing well. The other puppies didn't catch it, even though they had been together long before they came to Grateful. And they are thriving and they're available for adoption after the 1st of May. While they put their brushes to canvas, they all have the guidance of Pamela and her mother Peggy, who attended this event to support her daughter who loves animals of all kinds. She has loved dogs ever since she was little. Every time I would come in the living room, there would be her with another dog. <laughs> and uh, she would want to keep them. Of course, we couldn't keep them. We had two dogs already, <laughs> but she loved dogs. Everyone here is doing this out of the love of animals. They want to make sure that these pups are taken care of and Pamela is able to take care of them or any animal that is in need whenever she needs. We'll continue to have these little events so, you know, um, everybody, it's a win-win situation. It's just happy. The pups are happy, we're happy. It's very near and dear, I'm sure, to everybody's heart. Donate. Uh, they need all the help they can get with all the expenses. I know how expensive it is just taking care of my rescue kitties and vet bills and food, take just food and everything takes a lot. For Grateful Rescue TV, I'm Adam Byers Dunn. <laughs>
over, over ham, so we call it Santa ham. Yeah. It's you like to see any ham. Yes, I do. Well, I have to say that this is such an honor for me because I have been following Daisy on Facebook. You have a way, a very wonderful, unique knack of humanizing Daisy. Uh, it's easy to channel her. She's incredibly judgmental, usually very grumpy. She complains a lot. And uh, uh, her facial expressions, I've never seen a dog with such incredible facial expressions. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to uh, decipher what she's saying. And you're perfect at, at putting a title with that. Oh, gosh, thanks. Yeah, well, it's, it's all her, very little me. Again, <laughs> I just channel what she's telling me. So. And what does Daisy like to do for fun? Does she... Is she well, she to... judges. She judges. <laughs> How do you come up with all these little sayings and memes and things like that? Again, I just kind of channel what she's telling what she me. Might be yeah, thinking. depending on the situation, you know, we're in, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it's pretty easy, really. But like I said, I've never seen an animal with a facial expression. So they're they're pretty hysterical. I think she is the cutest. You've heard the expression, "They're so ugly, they're cute." She's so cute, she's cute, aren't you? <laughs> I just love Daisy, and this has been such an honor <laughs> to have her. I've been trying to get you for a while. I know, I know. Well, you know, her busy schedule, and I she know. does have a, a, you know, a whole team of attorneys that we have to clear, <laughs> clear her appearances through. So. Now, does she have her own social media account yet or anything like that? Well, she has an Instagram account, but um, she's kind of uh, technology <laughs> challenged. And I told her, I set up your account, you post yeah. the pictures, and she hasn't done it. So she basically uh, works through my Facebook account, which is Susan Hobbs. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we try and post, you know, three or four times a week because, again, she's, she's got quite a following. And you're really good at doing this. Oh, gosh, it's fun. You need to, it you is, need it's fun. to friend Susan Hobbs yep. on Facebook and follow Daisy because it's adorable. <laughs>